Hi, Maddie here. So, have you heard of a series called Neon Neko Sugar Girls? Or for short, Neko Sugar Girls. The series was made by Soap Opera 46, also known as Yoli Chan. It's one of the first, well, more famous fake animes on YouTube. Also known as fanimes, they're a genre of web animations. There's plenty out there, but the one I want to talk about is called Mari Mari Cutie. I know this isn't my usual form of content, but I'm so passionate about this series. I know it's really stupid and stuff, but I think it's actually really well made. Of course, it has its flaws and the creator did do a lot of bad things, but the series on its own, it's really good for its time, especially when it was made by a 14 year old. I wanted to redesign the characters and talk about the series a bit. The redesigning will be the speed paints in the background. I'll explain all my decisions later, once we get through the plot and everything about the characters in the series. So, let's start. The story takes place in Wyoming, USA. Mari and her two sisters, Katie and Lizzie, had just moved into a new home. Well, yes, the... Beginning of the series has some really humble animation. And you know, the characters' waists are really twiggy. I kinda love it, it's so funny and silly. Lizzie takes care of the two younger ones and they're going to the first day of school. I'd just like to add how I love the sound effects for the series, especially the car. You gotta love it. Mari and Katie exchange their goodbyes before they go into the first day of school. Bye, Katie! Have fun! <laughs> Bye, Mari! <laughs> I love you! <laughs> I love you, too! Okay, okay, yes, I know that Katie's mic is bad in the beginning of the season, but it gets fixed, it gets fixed. So yeah, for most of the rest of the episode, it's just Mari going through a hard time with school. She has to eat alone in the bathroom. It's the whole, like, cliche thing. But hey, I love these frames. From the horse face to the twiggy, twiggy waist, it really screams early 2010 art style. Also, What's wrong, sweetie? I ran too much in gym after eating lunch. I don't feel so well. Oh, why don't you lie down for a while? The voice acting in this series is so funny because it's just like the three main people just with different voice effects. The plot thickens when seventh period science happens. Goodness, he's so kawaii! He looks pretty young, at least 20. I just started going here and I already found a senpai! This starts the main arc of the series, Mari's obsession with Mr. Kaiser. Yeah, back in 2017, that was like a big thing with the main character being a Yandere in these type of fan series. At least from what I can remember. After school, they come home to their sister Lizzie, and some dialogue happens. Because I ran a lot after lunch. Well, that'll do it. Any homework? Please, Lizzie. You're starting to sound like mom. K Katie! T don't say that! I'm, I'm sorry, but she is. Guys, stop it. Mom is long gone. No need to argue over something. Something so... Never mind. Go up to your rooms and do what you usually do. Oh, Dad. I miss you so much. Why did that stupid truck driver have to be there? You guys have so much to live for. I so much. <laughs> so yeah, it's revealed that both their parents are dead in the series, but I really can't take this scene seriously when they're playing Doki Doki Literature Club music in the background. Along with Katie's mic. But I find the concept of Lizzie taking care of them now pretty interesting. For him, how will I ever talk to him? Hey Levi. What an idiot, trying to steal my senpai like that. Ugh, how dare she do this? I could, I could, uh, no, Mari. 
Don't go that far for your teacher. It's just a silly crush after all. You could never hurt anyone. Thus begins Ellie's and Mari's amazing rivalry. Ellie wasn't much of a character at all, just a rival for Mari, but I don't know, she made the series interesting. Cool, you two. Fine. We got work today, though. Boring, but angering. Oh, tell me about it. There's this girl. Okay, actually, let me start from the beginning. Yesterday, I walked into seventh period and I saw my teacher, Mr. Kaiser. He has short black hair and magenta eyes. He's very strict, but uh, I think I may or may not have a crush on him. You have a crush on your teacher? <laughs> Let me explain first. I'm pretty sure he's around 20, so he's close to my age. Mari, you're 15. If we got married in the future, it wouldn't matter. But it matters now. If you were to date him, that would be considered pedophilia. That's illegal. Let me continue. Anyways, I think he's a real cutie. And there's this other girl in my class. I think her name is Ellie. She tried to flirt with him today. It makes me so mad. It makes me so mad. What did she say? She said, and I quote, Hey, Levi. Are he used his first name to a teacher? Yes, she did. She didn't say it in a friendly way, a student-to-teacher way, but in a flirty way. You would have had to be there to understand. Then, when I was glaring at her because she's trying to steal my cutie, and she notices my glare, she turns to me and smirks. She smirks. Oh my gosh, what are you going to do? Who does this girl think she is? I don't know. I'm glad that the series did get something right, though. They explain to Mari that her feelings are wrong and she shouldn't act upon them, considering what the creator did in the future. The next episode isn't really all that important to the plot, it just goes through the day of life of Katie. But I do like this one scene. Angela, come play with us instead. You look really bored with Katie. Yeah, Katie's stuck up anyway. Come play with us. No! Stop being mean! What's going on here? I didn't do anything! These two random people I don't even know came up to us and told me to leave Katie to play with them! Girls, is this true? Yeah, I'm really sorry, Katie. No! They're lying! <laughs> Alright, you two come with me. Again, the voice acting in this series is immaculate. I really hope Mari will be okay. She kept saying how she knew that he was the one. Ridiculous. She's only 15. She can't be in love yet. She hardly knows what love is, especially if she thinks she's in love with her teacher. She's only young. Plus, after her past experiences, I don't think she needs a boyfriend anyway. If she dates Levi, that would be considered pedophilia. Disgusting. I guess this can be seen as a celebrity crush. Only, she knows him in real life. Okay, okay, listen on me with this. Remember this scene in the future once we get into season 3. You'll understand why when we get there. To work on your assignment that is due at the end of class. Dear Levi, you've made my first few weeks in this school so enjoyable. I really like having you as a teacher, but to be honest, there's been something on my mind for a while. As you know, most of the kids in my grade are really stupid. I can't find a boyfriend! I've tried talking to so many of them, texting and everything! But there seems to be just one person and I can't get them out of my mind. And that person is you. I know this may seem weird, but if you think about it, our ages aren't really that far apart. And in a few years, when we get married, it won't matter anyways. Ugh. Why would I give this to him? This is stupid. And that, my viewers, is how you get a restraining order. But no, seriously, I kind of love how they dramatize her entire obsession. It's so funny. Alright, everyone. Shut your mouth and listen up. Tonight, as you may know, our parent-teacher conferences. 
As I looked at all of your grades last night, it seems like a lot of you need to come in with your parents to have a little chat with me. A B is a B, but I think it would be a good idea just to come in so I can talk to him some more, and then maybe get Lizzie's approval of my boyfriend. We may not be dating in real life, but we're definitely dating in my head. We have... We're married. We have two children. There's the older brother who protects his little sister from mean boys. And then there's the younger girl, who's a total cutie. Their names are Jack and Lindy. I feel like I've heard those names together before, but I don't remember where from. Oh, I should pay attention. All right, so Mari goes home and asks Lizzie to take her to the parent-teacher conference. And some stuff happens. Oh, Mari. It's nice seeing you here. It's nice seeing you too, Mr. Kaiser! Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh! Should I? This series is so out of pocket. Like, it's just a handshake. Alright, so overall in my class, Mari's doing about average. She's quiet, does her work, but seems to get lost in her thoughts. In fact, there's something I found that slightly concerns me, Miss Kawaii. May I have a word with you, alone? Miss Kawaii, I found this in your sister's folder. Wait, I think I put my love letter in the folder by accident instead of my assignment! No! He already read it too! He's gonna show Lizzie! Okay, but this scene was genuinely embarrassing. I, I would genuinely cry. <gasps> I'm so sorry. I can't believe she'd actually do something like this. <laughs> no! No! What am I gonna do? Did you hear that? Mari heard us discussing her love letter. No, Miss Kawaii, I think she needs some time to cool down. I guess you're right. Okay, okay, when I first watched the series, I thought that the romance between Levi and Lizzie was really, well, out of nowhere. But throughout the series, it does get pretty much more important. What am I gonna do? He knows I like him and he's going to think I'm a total freak! Huh? Hey, little buddy, what's the matter? Aww. <coughs> I, I hope I don't get rabies! I feel really weird after that! Wait, what's that? Fuck you, bitch. I'm out of here. Oh my god, it's a Neko Sugar Girl reference. Hopefully she doesn't die, baby. It was nice finally meeting you, Levi. It was nice meeting you, too. I guess I'll see you around. Before you go, here, take this. So yeah, Lizzie goes out and looks for Mari... She then finds her and they both go home. Hello? Who are you? Hello, little girl. Is Mari there? No, she's at conferences. Would you like to come in to have a tea party? Sure! What is your favorite color? Red! Why red? It's a very violent color. Oh, oh, I don't know. I just like how it looks. Now. I really need to talk to Mari. It's getting late. Are you sure she's okay? They're probably on their way home now. I, I know some people say that it was flawed writing to have Katie just let this random guy go into her house, but like, she just wants to throw a tea party. So much. I can't bear the thought of losing him. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't understand. He's just so perfect. I haven't even known him for that long. I hardly know him at all. But I can't stop loving him. It's so complicated. I don't know what to do anymore. Well, we're home now. So don't worry about it. The week is over. What the f- Hey, Lizzie. This guy is looking for Mari. I don't know why, though. M me Yes, you. I need to tell you something. What is it? This! What? What? Why did you- 
yeah, zero to a hundred real fast. We'll learn in the future why this guy did that and stuff, but like for right now, it's so out of nowhere. My sister was just stabbed by an unknown man. She is in critical condition. <laughs> Honestly, the emotion in her voice acting is actually really good. I don't care what people say. Okay, so the next episode is really just shenanigans with Mari in the hospital along with Ellie and her friends. So it doesn't really do that much for the plot. It does introduce us to new characters like Paige, Vivi, and the emo one. Those characters are usually irrelevant most of the time. I used to not understand why Mr. Kaiser was there at the hospital with them, but I'm pretty sure that's just because Lizzie's there and they're getting along. Speaking of Lizzie. I wonder why this man wanted to hurt Mari out of all people. Whoever it was is dead. What? What do you mean by that? Wait, what? Oh my. <laughs> so yeah, Lizzie killed the guy that stabbed Mari. So that's a whole thing. Also, there's this one scene they really like. Love me? Shut up, Ellie. He already said no. Why can't you take no for an answer? How could someone not like this? Sorry, but you look like a rat. Agreed. That's no way to treat my friend. She didn't mean it, Ellie. Oh, I see how it is. Goodbye. Like, she just lost all of her sassiness. She was like, okay, goodbye. The writing in this show is crazy. After that, Levi just explains why he doesn't like Ellie and how girls are always all over him whenever he moves to a new school. I genuinely do not understand the hype. The next episode is about Katie doing a bake sale to pay for Mari's medical bills. On the first day, she somehow gets $1,000. Like, how much are you charging for that lemonade? Sure thing. How many do you want? Six of them. How much is that going to cost? $12, please. Thank you. Enjoy! How does it taste? Great, thank you. Uh, honey, I'm gonna go shit myself. I'll be back. Oh my goodness! Will he be okay? Did you put something in these cookies? No, I didn't. Here, this is the recipe I used. Huh, that's weird. Maybe it's just an allergic reaction. You better go make sure he's alright. So yeah, Katie put laxatives in that guy's cookie, and that becomes a whole thing later on. It's like so unnecessary, she's so evil. So Mari has the plan to dress really pretty once she gets out of the hospital and goes back to school. She thinks this will have Levi like her more than Ellie, even though Levi, well, hates Ellie. But you know, who cares? Stabbed Mari? Yeah. I told the police it was self-defense, and he was still on our property when I killed him, so it was also considered a break-in. And they believe that how? I'm a pretty good liar, I guess. And actor. But, but, your monotone voice. Honestly, I don't know. It's done and over with. Oh, she's so evil. The whole killing the red-haired guy thing becomes a big thing later on. You need to focus on school, and I need to focus on work and other things. Elizabeth, I want to tell you something that is embarrassing to admit, but is true. And that is? I have feelings for you. Plot twist. But no, in reality, this was really out of nowhere. Especially because they only met no more than a week ago. So Mari gets better and she, you know, gets ready for school. While this happens, Lizzie has like gotten no sleep because she's been on call with Levi the whole time. She likes to stay up all night and it really affects her. 
But since she's the older sister, she pretends to be okay and just drives them to school and stuff. It really shows that she cares for her sisters. This will be ironic soon. So like Mari gets dropped off at school and stuff, but she gets like the super weird looks by everybody because of how she's dressed. She even gets dress coded by the teacher and is like pulled away crying. weird animal noises anyways she gets like new clothes and ellie makes fun of her the thing is levi is in the classroom with them and does not stand up for them teacher of the year after that mari comes home and complains to her sisters about everything lizzie feels bad for her so later that night she talks to levi she was sobbing i didn't know what to do because i didn't want to even hint at the fact that i have your phone number I would have said, I'll have a chat with him later, but that would imply that I have your phone number, in which I do not want. I know. That was a good move, but since Mari seems like the type to have those subtle hints fly right over her head, it wouldn't have really mattered. I know, but Katie can. She would have asked, and Mari was right there crying, and I didn't really think she could take that. Anyway... Why didn't you try to stop Ellie? I mean, I know you don't like Mari in that way, but keep in mind that she's my sister. And if anything, you should respect her at least. I didn't really know what to say, I guess. Plus, it's against school rules for teachers to have favorites. <sighs> well, next time, I advise that you tell that Ellie brat to shut her trap before I do it for her. With staples. I don't really like dealing with Mari when she comes home screaming and crying. I understand. It's getting late, and I have to deal with brats tomorrow. Okay. Good night. Ellie. Something's off about her. I'm on to you, brat. So yeah, Lizzie does not like Ellie. The next morning she's super duper tired because she had not slept the entire night. You know, talking to Levi. But she still drives her sisters to school. Okay, bye! Bye? So yeah, Mari gets made fun of more at school, and some guy calls her Mari the Thotty. Now, everyone's been making fun of me! Some dude called me Mari the Thotty this morning. Do you know his name? He's in my grade. I th think his name is Tremaine Bennell? Oh, okay. Well, just ignore this Tremaine kid. Probably just another Ellie worshipper. Yeah, thanks for helping me out. I just need to focus on school, not stupid Ellie and her dumb friends. Yeah, now you should get a start on that homework you have. Okay. What are you doing? Looking. For Tremaine? Perhaps. Ah, okay. Well... I was just looking to see where Ellie lives so I can talk with her parents sometime. Wouldn't that be a little creepy? No. Not after I talked to them for a while over Facebook. Do you have any homework? Yeah, I should probably go do that now. Bye! Breaking news. A house on 3rd Avenue just caught fire. The Benel household's home caught fire from what we assume was a candle. Thankfully, no one was harmed. Yeah, she a bit evil. And how the heck are people gonna just assume that a candle did all that? Next episode is about Katie and Lizzie. Katie's sick, so Mari goes to school on her own. Lizzie then decides to go to the grocery store to get Katie some medicine. Did you hear about that house burning down last night? Yeah, isn't it terrible? Yeah, I feel so awful for that poor family. I wish I could help. It's hard to believe that a candle of all things caused that. It's not impossible, just crazy. I wonder how things are going to go for Mari today. I'm just glad Levi isn't a pedophile, and that he doesn't like Mari.
I'm still surprised that he hasn't confessed to me yet. I mean, that happened. Maybe it meant nothing to him. Maybe it was just a one-time deal. But if that's the case, why does he still talk to me? No, Elizabeth, now is not the time to worry about some dude. You have more important things to worry about than him. Katie is sick, and you need to take care of her. She is your number one priority right now. The whole relationship throughout the series with Levi and Lizzie is kind of confusing. But at this point, I thought they were dating, but apparently he hasn't even confessed to her. It smooths itself out throughout the series near the end, but for now, it's just a will-they-won't-they they situation. When Lizzie gets home, Katie is like bored, so she asks Lizzie to explain the story of her and that red-haired guy. She explains how she lied to the police and stuff, using her acting skills to look like the victim in the situation so she doesn't get arrested. After that, Katie gets suspicious and asks about Tremaine's house. Here last night! I heard it was Tremaine's house that burnt down! <laughs> well, yes, actually. She won't die. I'm her own sister. Without me, she'd be dead. I know quite a bit about that. But Lizzie, did, did you? Yep, I did. No one calls my sister a thought. I admire your loyalty. I don't think murder is the best sol so solution. <coughs> <coughs> I know, but how else would they have known when enough is enough? By telling them? <laughs> so yeah, after that, Lizzie starts to get anxious of Levi falling in love with her sisters for some reason. The boy craziness ran into her as well. But that doesn't really matter for now. We then go to the next episode, which is the season finale, which is 31 minutes long, compared to the less than 10 minute episodes usually. Okay, so it starts with the announcement of a talent show going on at Mari's school. And you know, guess what? Mari wants to go into the contest to impress Levi. Mari tells Lizzie this, but Lizzie and her get into an argument about Levi not liking her for the five millionth time. Because Mari really cannot get the hint. After that, Mari decides to do the song Don't Stop Believing by Journey. She has the idea of doing a private performance for her family. Lizzie invites Levi because, you know, they're kissing buddies. She performs, yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. Let's get to the finale. Oh my gosh, today's the day! Okay, so here's the dress I made for you, and where's your- Mari, why do you want to wear white? Because I like these clothes? Have you checked the calendar recently? I'll be fine. I'm too excited to worry about that. It was supposed to happen yesterday, so it'll just come around next month instead, right? Oh my god, she has peanuts for brains. After all that, the talent show starts. But before that, there's an announcement that's made. Levi's moving to a new school. Ellie and Lizzie are shocked and stuff. They're so sad. But honestly, I don't care. I care about the performance that comes next. One, I'm going to be singing a song dedicated to a friend of mine. I hope everyone enjoys. Thought Patrol, Thought Patrol, I'll be there on a double. Whenever there's a thought. Round Thought of Kiss Bay, Ellie and her team of one will come and save the day. Mari, 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 Mari. Yeah, you're a hoe. Thought Patrol, Thought Patrol, I'll be there on the double. Thought Patrol. Thought Patrol, I'll be there on the double. No thoughts too big, no thoughts too small. Thought Patrol, I'm on a roll. So here I go, Thought Patrol, whoa uh oh. Thought Patrol, whoa uh oh. Thought Patrol. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. I hope you liked my song, Mari. I knew she'd do something, but I didn't expect that. Wonderful performance, Portissimo. But anyway, let's move on to Mari's performance. Funnily enough, it's made in MMD, which I think is pretty cool. I don't know, I'm an animator. I like it when shows mixed in different forms of animation together. 
But at the end of the performance, the worst thing that could happen literally happened. <laughs> Mari gets herself cleaned up and like cries off stage and everything, you know, what you would do if you had your period on stage. Lizzie gets a text from Levi telling them to meet him on Friday for his flight. He made arrangements and everything for them to skip school, so you know, pretty awesome. So yeah, they say their goodbyes to Levi, that they love them, even though it's so weird because it's just their teacher. Like they haven't even been there for that long. But I won't question it. He likes Lizzie or whatever. Lizzie has a private goodbye with Levi right before he leaves. How they truly feel about each other and stuff. They're like super duper sad. Yeah, whatever. Hey, Katie, can you guys come down here for a minute? Seeing how horribly wrong Mari's talent show went, I think we should move. What? Do we even have the money for that? I'll figure it out. You two don't worry about it. Just get your things packed. We're leaving tomorrow. All right, we finally concluded a season. Two more to go. Now I can finally critique season one. Honestly, in my opinion, it's pretty decent for a 14 year old's job. She made it all on her own. I can relate to this but that doesn't mean it's free from criticism. First, let's talk the writing. Yes, some of these scenes or like plot twists can come out of nowhere. Like the whole Lizzie and Levi thing. Me personally, what I would have done different is just put some more build up to it. Like, yeah, sure, they could have met at the parent-teacher conference and maybe exchanged numbers for like school reasons. And maybe they could have bumped into each other like outside of school and then could have shown interest. I also would have fleshed out Katie a bit more. For a main character, she really only has one episode all about her. They flesh her out more in season 2 and 3, but for now, she's really just a side character. Also, just in general, the story is really, really, really fast paced. I know it's only supposed to be 10 episodes, but like too much happens in like a lot of episodes. Like the Tremaine thing, the bullying, it's just... I think the pacing could slow down just a small bit so we could focus on the characters more. Okay, for the art, well, yes, it's not the best, and maybe that was on purpose. I could say a few things. The backgrounds are sometimes really lazy. When I mean really lazy, I mean single color lazy. That's not to be mean to the creator. They're really young and stuff. But I would have liked to maybe see some effort in the backgrounds, along with the proportions of the face. I know they're going for the anime style, but some of the side profiles look very canine. But hey, you can make it work if you wanted to. Also, sometimes the character designs can be really inconsistent. Like Mari's stripes in her hair will disappear, Lizzie's hair will just change color like in between frames. And sometimes they'll have one eye, but then have an eye. It's just, pick a lane. I know you're trying. Again, this is just the beginning of the series, so there's gonna be a lot of flaws. Not saying the newer seasons are not flawed either, but this is the most flawed one of them all. Right, this is the conclusion of the season one section. Now on to the more, you know, cooler season. Editing Maddie here. This season alone took 34 minutes to review and it's the shortest one out of them all. So I'm probably gonna make this a three part series and the final part, I'll actually explain the character redesigns and stuff so we know, you know, fully about the characters and why I designed them that way. Hope you like my review and just recalling of the series. I know that the creator is in still some drama or whatever and they left the internet, but I still really like this series. I see it has the potential and everything. Again, I don't support the creator's actions. Well, see you in part two! Boing.